Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I made this little alien guy this week. And this is not my usual thing, but my daughter <laughs> made one. And this isn't her usual thing either. She's actually an oil painter who uh, makes landscapes and portraits. She's got a bunch of uh, solo shows coming up. And she even has a painting coming up in the American Impressionist Society's National Show in um, September. So, like I said, this is not her normal thing, and it's not my normal thing. But when I saw this, she actually just made this painting so that she could do a really quick project for her uh, YouTube channel. Had to put it back because <laughs> I'm afraid I'll get some paper mache on it. Um, she needed a really fast project, and I needed a really fast project. I've been just swamped with them. I'm doing some pressure canning and working in the garden and uh, built a, a, a bigger run for the chickens. I've just been swamped. So I wanted something really quick so you guys didn't forget about me, and i got to get my my YouTube videos out so you can see that I make <laughs> patterns for sculptures in case somebody wants to buy one. You can see those down there. So this guy was perfect. And the other thing that it was perfect for is because I have been thinking for a really long time that it would be fun to create three-dimensional sculptures of children's two-dimensional artwork. Just as a present to the child themselves, a present for the grandma. That would be really cool. Um, something that the kids can do themselves and give to grandma. And even though uh, my daughter isn't really a kid anymore, <laughs> this really reminded me of something that a child might make if they were um, thinking outside the box. And it also gave me an excuse to use these little uh, glass cabochons, I think that's how you pronounce it, for the eyeballs. There is a guest post, a beautiful guest post on my website showing you how to make animal eyes using these glass cabochons. And I have never actually followed those instructions yet. I've had these in a drawer <laughs> for like five years and I've never used them. So this was my excuse uh, and, and my way of kind of getting my feet wet with the whole idea of making uh, eyes. They're really, really simple, obviously. I don't know if they're going to focus here, but uh, <laughs> um, they, they were just really fun to do. And because I was so obsessed with the eyes, I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to getting the shapes right. Now, I want to um, let you know that the way I'm going to be making this shape using a plastic bag and sand is something that you can use if you want to like do a portrait. Um, uh, any other kind of shape you want to do a snowman um, gosh there's just so many different things that you can use this uh, particular method with especially if you add just a little bit more water to it so that it'll hold its shape just a little bit better than mine did so let me go ahead and show you how this was done it went really fast <laughs> I started out that really easy I filled a plastic bag with some wet sand Obviously, I wanted to keep the sand in there, so I wrapped some tape around the end of the of the bag, and then I just started kind of pushing it around and, and squishing it a little bit to see if it was going to be the right shape. I made some eye stalks with foil. I just crumpled them really loosely into one long rope. I, I didn't want to put two separate ones on there. That would be too fragile. So I've made one long rope. I squished it in the middle so that I'd have a flat piece to tape it onto the top of my green alien's head. And then after pushing the sand around to get kind of a generalized <laughs> shape of the, the legs and the hips, then I covered all of the plastic with masking tape because uh, paper strips and paste just don't stick to plastic. This would be a project that you could use paper mache clay. It, it would work just fine. I did tape the bottom edges of the plastic bag to a piece of cardboard and that gives it a nice flat edge down at the bottom. I wanted it to be flat on the table. So um, I went ahead and, and put a piece of cardboard down at the bottom and taped it on. I, I used green frog tape <laughs> because I happened to have some in the house left over from a painting project I did a couple of years ago. Um, don't go out and buy green frog tape just for this project. That would be crazy. But it just happened to be exactly the same color <laughs> as the paint that I'm going to be using. And that came in really handy when it was time to put the paper mache on around the eyes. Now for the paper mache, I made some cooked flour and water paste. There's a recipe for it on my website. I'll just put a link to it right there and, and you can see it down in the description too. It's really easy. And then I tore some strips of newspaper. I always tear the cut edges off so that you don't have you know, ridges all over your paper strips and paste after it's dry. 
Basically, I used just enough paper strips and paste so that I couldn't see the green um, masking tape through the wet paper. And, so, and that took just like two layers. That, that's really all it needed. I covered the body and I, I guess we can call it a head <laughs> with the uh, paper mache and I also covered the eye stalks but I'm not adding the eyes quite yet. I wanted to make sure that the eye stalks were going to be strong enough to hold the eyes on there. Um, the, the glass cabochon is just a little bit heavier than you know, the rest of it so I just wanted to, the paper mache to be dry first before I got started on that. When the paper mache was drying I started working on the glass eyes. I, uh, my eyeballs were really, really easy. I just put a really small black dot right in the middle of the back of the cabochons. Then I let that dry really good so that it didn't smear when I added the white acrylic paint. Um, I brushed it, you can see, from the middle to the outside and, and it gave a really nice um, design on the eye. While that paint was drying, I used an unpainted cabochon just as a model because I needed to make the eye containers, you know, the, the I don't know, the eye socket or <laughs> whatever you call it. It's going to allow me to attach the eyes to the eye stalks. So I crumpled a, a ball of foil that was just exactly the same um, roundness as the glass, but it has a, a hole at the back uh, so that th that... So there'd be something that I could push over the stock and kind of hold everything together. I put some of the green um, frog tape over the flat part. And then I used some hot glue and stuck a, a fairly thin rope of crumbled foil around the edges of it. Um, I wanted it to be large enough so that once I put the eye on there, I would have enough foil to press around just the very, very edge of the eye. I didn't want a whole lot but just enough to hold it on there. As soon as I had the shapes the way I wanted them, I went ahead and put the real eyes on there and pushed the, the foil around there and then tried to make it just as smooth as I could possibly get it so that it would look really nice once it was all covered with paper mache. But what I should have done right then was to add some masking tape over the whole entire eye holder <laughs> part. Um, I didn't... Uh, I know that paper mache strips and paste will not stick to foil, but I forgot. And so I, well, that was a, that was a problem. I used some hot glue to stick the, the holders onto the stalks. But then when I started adding the paper mache as the, the permanent way to hold them on there and, and to make the skin all kind of flow together, then it just totally didn't work. And I had to stop everything I was doing and add my, my masking tape then. Uh, like I said, I, I actually ended up using the masking tape as the final material right around the, like the last quarter inch, right around the edge of the eye because the paint actually is exactly the same color. And that turned out really nice. It made it a lot easier than trying to put uh, wet paper mache right up against the glass. Now I did go back and add just a little bit more shapes. It, it didn't have quite enough definition for those front legs and I added a little bit of a bulge where his hips were going and then of course I had to let that uh, cover that with paper mache and let that dry again. I very carefully cut the cardboard that was around the bottom edge of the alien and I pulled it off. Then I poured out the sand and I pulled out all of the extra plastic. I had to cut that out. Um, there's the part that's right up against the masking tape. I went ahead and left that in there. Then I went ahead and put the cardboard bottom back on with a, just a couple of pieces of masking tape and then paper mache all the way around the edge. You don't want to put paper mache all over the entire bottom. If you have any kind of flat cardboard, it's really hard to keep it from warping when you're using it with paper mache. So just put it right around the edge if you're making something that has a shape like this. Then I just went ahead and put it on a wire grate so that it, air could get to it without me um, leaving it upside down. Then I was pretty much all done. I just gave the alien a coat of green paint. This is called Fresh Cut Grass Folk Art number 2579E. Exactly the same color as <laughs> frog tape. Really handy. I, I just happened to have this and I have no idea why. I must have bought it years ago. I had never even opened it until today. And it was just exactly what I needed. I The first 
layer did not cover up all the print on the newspaper so I had to give it two coats then I painted a really thin stripe of black around the very edge of the eyes and I drew on the alien's mouth with a uh, felt tip pen and it was all done he does still have a little bit of sand in there that was not intentional I don't know if you can hear it or not it's kind of like one of those rain sticks <laughs> that they use in the was it Central American music um, I've decided to say that that's the way my, my um, frog alien talks. Why not? <laughs> I'm hoping that the little boy next door wants this because <laughs> it's just kind of silly. But it was so much fun. It, I could have done a whole lot more work making the shapes though. Uh, Jesse's, I'm going to show you real fast. If you're borrowing a, a, a painting from a, a young artist, in your family, you probably want to be a whole lot more careful into getting all the shapes right. Obviously, I didn't. I was just so occupied <laughs> by the eyeballs that that was the only thing that I was really paying any attention to. So you'll probably want to uh, do yours a little bit more carefully than I did, but I still had an awful lot of fun. Now, also, I should mention um, that if you're borrowing uh, somebody else's drawing, no matter what age they are, you definitely want to ask permission before you use those designs for your own sculpture because they do own the copyright as soon as that that drawing is done. And, and age does not matter. <laughs> it's still there. Uh, so do ask permission before using it unless you're going to make a little sculpture for them as a present to, to the actual artist. So if you've got a very young artist in the family and you think that they would like a, a sculpture of their drawing, you know, maybe to keep in their room, I think that would make them feel really special. And in that case, since they're going to be getting it in the end, you probably don't, you can probably keep it a secret. Otherwise, though, be sure to ask. <laughs> it's only fair. That's all I've got for you today. Go make something and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you later.